Hi everyone. Today's guest is a sought after coach, online teacher, motivation speaker, and founder of my favorite product, Wish Things. Wish Things. It's amazing, as you can see. I have all her product and the necklace that I can put my wishes in, and hopefully they all come true. No, not hopefully they will, and they are. Um, she is on a courageous mission to help us unlock all 1,000 watts of our personal power, and then creating a ripple effect that inspire everyone around us to ignite their greatest potential. I definitely wanted to talk to her about the 1,000 watt and what it's all about. The Worldwide Wish is her latest attempt with a mission to transform the world with the collective power of wishing. And everybody, let's you welcome Alexa here for today's podcast. Alexa, I'm so glad that you are here. You won't believe it. And thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me to the wish shop, the workshop. Oh, the wish bash. The, the wish bash. And then I follow the busy, um, the the event planning. Busy bash. Um, Heather's busy bash. company. Yes, it's amazing. And look, I'm wearing it. Um, incredible. Everybody should see it. No, I'm wearing it. And then I forgot that it's made by paper. So then I almost jumped in the shower. I was like, wait, 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 wait. Oh, I had to take off my bracelet. But I'm taking this bracelet everywhere. And obviously, I'm like, where's my necklace? I thought I had my necklace somewhere. Oh, there it is. See, oh, I wear so much. Is. I wear so much. It's like part of my body now that I forget. Well, so- Evie, I will say this. We are new friends, um, which oh. is always so fun. And one of the best reasons why I love wish beads is the fact that I've met the most incredible people. Aww. But what I can say about you is that you, you are like someone who just goes all in. And I love <laughs> that about you. You know, there's like you, you trust your intuition, you find something, whether it's a person or an experience or a product, and you give yourself over to it. That's my experience with wish beads, because as a creator, especially as someone who is so intent on wish beads being a tool for transformation, I just feel so um, grateful that you really understood what I'm doing. You know, you really, really really did. did. And I I just think it's, it's the coolest. So I'm really touched. And, and I love it. And then one of the thing is, you know, I was telling you how I got introduced to your product wish beads. And, uh, you know, there's so many amazing women on my podcast I want to interview and get to know. But a lot of time you don't have this urge or a part of it is time and, and location. But like with wish being, I was like, this, this, this calling was like, I had to meet the founder of this <laughs> amazing wish being. I'm not kidding. Seriously. And, and, and you know, this, I, 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 my grand, my grandma who raised me since I was four to 12, pretty much she was a big part shaping who I am. Um, pass away. So I actually went to Cambodia and Asia doing kind of soul searching to find myself. And one of the jewelry I brought with me was Wishbane, the necklace, right? Wow. And so I went to the Hmong, the cleansing, and I also sent my grandma to the other side, holding her hand, at least in, in the vibrational way. Yes. Um, yes. The Your necklace, Wishbane, was with me the entire time. And, oh. and, and then the part of that, there was a little temple called the, it, the temple is for the wisdom of God. And then when I was there where everybody in the world go over there to make wish or manifest, you know, I was there just meditating and clearly your, your necklace with me also. And the, the, the guy, the tour guide said, like, start hitting your heart. And I was like, what are you talking about? Maybe his English is not that good. <laughs> like, what do you mean hitting my heart? So he pounded. So he was doing that. So I was doing that. And the necklace was like bouncing on my chest. Right. And then, wow. and the heartbeat was just like pounding. And it was like drum, like I can literally hear my heartbeat like a drum. And it was like anchoring the whole temple. And you feel the vibration and it was just so beautiful to me. And then it's one of those things, so even talking about that, I'm going to be in tears. It's one of those things, like, you know, like you, you, people talk about it, like a human are made of vibration and, and mm. so on It's energy, but to actually feel it with your senses and to, it, was, it just changed your view about a lot of things. It was, it just, yeah. 
Anyway, I, so I was like, I had to see <laughs> the creator of Rishi Bay. I had to meet her. Uh, I, I love that. I mean, you know, I often say that wish beads are not magic, but they are there to remind you of your own magic. Yeah. And and so you think about when wish beads came into your life and you felt like you intuited that this object um, is is meaningful. It's going it's special to me. And you bring it with you on this really meaningful journey to to connect and grieve your grandmother. Yeah. And um and it's so interesting, Evie, too, that the moment in that uh in that I don't know if it was a monastery, but in that temple, the idea that whoever was there invited you to activate your chest by pounding your chest is so akin to the wish beads experience, which oh, wow. uh-huh. really begins with a guided visualization where you're connecting your light, you're imagining your light in the center of your chest. And so when someone says like, what is your heart's desire? Your, mm-hmm. your wish is coming from that heart center which is a very special energy center in the body. And so you see how right where you are in your life or right where you are when you met my brand and me and all of that, but really, really the the product itself, it's just an indication to me that you are in alignment with your heart, that you are, you are ready to really go deeper into that heart space And that may, that may come into many forms. It may be a relationship. It may be a new heart centered career decision. It may be whatever it may be more heartfelt relationships or, or just a a stronger connection with uh, our, as our ancestors, you know, or with the divine um, or the unseen. So it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's, it's very in alignment. What happened to you with what the intention is behind the product. And I'm so glad you 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 saying this because when I first got introduced to your product, right, is actually my birthday last year, and it was from another great dear girlfriend of mine named Tony Ko, and she brought it for me. It was a bracelet, and and I was looking for love, and so she sent me she my my birthday gift from her was rose cord and and a bracelet. Mm, yeah, yeah. And, and I guess worst course was to bring love and so on. And then I thought it was so interesting that you're supposed to write your intention in this little tiny paper and you roll it with a toothpick and you put it in your bracelet and you wore it so that your wish would come true. So that's when I first got introduced to, to wish being. And then I thought yes. it just it just it's just a, a making a wish thing. You know, I, I thought it was just like a making a wish of saying your intention, but you get to wear it as a jewelry. But this time when I went to Asia and, you know, sending my, my grandma to the other side, it's a completely different feeling. And then it's yeah. much more impact. It literally is part of me, the alignment, as you just explained it. So, so powerful. Um, so thank you, you know. Oh, and- thank you. <laughs> I, I really mean it. You this is exactly my intention. It's, it's, it's okay if people want to give wish beads as a special gift, or if someone has, you know, a very, a wish that that, that's at the top of their mind, like I want ready for love. All of that is wonderful, but it's also like a portal of possibility where you can go deeper. And so that's why I have things like guided visualizations and 21 days of wish work and live experiences, because the teaching is really what um, is the heart and soul behind the entire experience. And I've done my best to make that teaching available to everybody. Yeah. And then I do all talking. I realized that wish me, you didn't start wish me as your first career, right? This is not. No, like, <laughs> yeah. no I didn't. I mean, uh-huh. to zoom far back. I have always had a deep love of people um, from the time I was little and I performed in school plays at school and I found my way into acting as really a deep discovery into uh, the human psyche and to how people, you know, what are their motivations? Um, what are their quirks? How do you embody that, you know, as a character? So I, I, I was a professional actress. I went to Yale drama school. I did plays, wow. eventually found my way into, um, you know, TV and film and commercials and all of that. But what happened was once it became a business, there was so much about that 
that the 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 part of that my love of people and character and performance was only one tiny sliver in a in the machine that took a lot of time and i very much value time and i also felt that there was something more that i was meant to do with my life and i was uh, and i was working regularly so on the outside it looked like i was pretty successful but on the inside i knew that i i wasn't really doing my life's work mm. and it all came to a head when i was filming an episode of the tv show bones and oh, I love that show. Yeah. So I played, okay. yeah. So I played, I was a guest star, played a lawyer and something bad happened to my character and I'm laying on the floor with fake blood <sighs> coming out of my mouth. And I literally laid there cause I was waiting for the lights and waiting for the other actors. And, and I, and I had like this existential crisis. And I said, what am I doing with my life? Like what, like what, like I've worked so hard and here I am look, basically looking like a dead person. <gasps> and I, I need a sign. And I asked the universe or God or whatever, give yeah. me a sign for what I am meant to do uh -huh. because it was really a crisis. So two days later, I get a call from a dear friend who I met on a Neosporin commercial and she had started a new business and asked me if I would be a media trainer for one of her clients and teach her the skills to speak with confidence from the stage. Oh. And before I could think about that, I, I was like, yes, let me teach my, um, my awareness of what it takes to step into your body with confidence, to speak with confidence, to have the right mindset, because I was already interested in personal development at that point. And mm -hmm. all of my work has always been about the power of positive thoughts and, and, and actually learning how to um, address the very common negative thoughts that are running through our heads. It's normal. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so I, uh, I said yes to that opportunity and long story short, I began that went very well. I created a website. I started doing workshops and corporate coaching. And then I also began making online courses and, you know, over a decade later, I have about a dozen courses and about 175,000 students around the world who have taken these confidence and communication courses. <laughs> oh, that. That that's fit your calling more, right? Because your skill that you learn being um to be to be on the TV or uh, yeah. a film, that brings you like teaching people com to speak confidently. I I, I see that connection. That's totally right. Like, I mean, yeah. it's it's yeah. So there there's there's certainly some performance skills there, and then there's really yeah. my passion, which is, you know, how do we discover who we truly are? And then the next question is. How do we truly discover what we really want? Because mm. I know we didn't come to this planet to suffer. Yeah. We may have come here to experience obstacles so that we can grow and learn and evolve. But I also believe that we all came here for a special gift, for, for, for something that is um, our contribution to this world. And that mm. contribution doesn't necessarily mean your career, but but people are truly extraordinary. And when you can discover yourself and learn how to be a little braver and show up with a little more kindness, uh, curiosity, um, humility, uh, selfless giving, that's precisely the energy that makes this world a better place. And yeah. so my work, you know, whether it's been as a performer or as a coach and teacher, and now as, um, as a, as an entrepreneur and a product creator, it it's always been centered on, you know, leave this place a little better than you found it. And, mm -hmm. and your light connecting with your inner light is the source of that gift. And so helping people in different ways, reconnect with their own inner light so that they can, um, they can do the work that they were put on this, on this world to do. I think I just felt like I just did my meditation with you. <laughs> I I swear it's 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 such a powerful. And that's another thing people saying word, what you say have energy in it, right? And there's vibration, yeah. and even what you just said is so positive. Like I can feel that. I feel that energy. So thank you. 
Oh, um, you know, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to, to share. And it's not, and I really don't want people to believe that I run around all day with my rose colored glasses and never have snafus. It's just not true. I'm a human being like everybody else. But when we can catch ourselves in the moment when we feel stuck or scared or stressed or all of those things, mm -hmm. um, that's why wish beads are there to remind you with that visual, visual, tangible reminder, no, I'm going to focus my mind again on that vision that I had where everything was just right. I'm going to focus my mind again on the goals that I have for my life, the wishes that I have, the, the, the heart's calling what I'm ready to experience because I, I, I really truly believe that the only person that's going to make your wishes come true are you. <laughs> There's yeah, nobody right. else. We can't blame anybody else. Yeah. There's nobody else. So we have to find those, those tools and people and experiences that, that support us along the way. And then I was, when I was writing down my wishes, right, whether it's just the first time I, I got your gift, um, the, the bracelet, it was just so, um, you'll hard feel it when you actually write it on a piece of paper, yes. Do you know yes. what I mean? It just... It's different than texting it. It's different. Is there something yes. about your handwriting? Yes. yes. You know, and and I and my friend Alex said, you know, when you write that wish, it's like a tiny contract that you're making with yourself. You know, it's like there's something powerful about writing it down. And so with the bracelets of the jewelry, you're writing it down on a piece of paper that's like the size of a fortune cookie message. Yeah. But there's also experiences um, like in my book or, you know, when you did the paper beat experience where you can really write down all of the delicious, I call them delicious details. Oh. You know, like, like when you talked about when you're, when you're in that temple where your senses just come alive. Yeah. And so when you can picture your wish, not just with the conscious wish, like I'm ready for a new relationship, but when you really give yourself time to imagine the details it's as if you are zooming forward in time and taking a look around and saying, what do I see? What's going on? You know, I don't believe time is linear the way that we talk. I'm, I'm interested in things like quantum physics. I oh, me too. <laughs> I'm so I think, glad we are. This. Right. I think that we can play with time. So if we're, if we're stuck in a place, you know, like the, like the phrase, what's the worst case scenario? We're so good at that, right? Visualizing mm -hmm. what's the worst that could happen. But the question that we have to ask ourselves is what's the best case scenario? What's the best scenario? So let's say you have um, an intention that you have for, for uh, a big vacation coming up or a big meeting. It doesn't actually matter what it is. Something that you desire consciously, it's a goal. It's happening. Um, instead of worrying about all the things that might go wrong, the idea of seeing yourself there and all top athletes do this, the power of visualization, they see themselves going down those slopes beautifully, easily, effortlessly. Or if you're visualizing before a big speaking engagement, you're seeing the eyes uh, of the appreciative faces of the audience member. You're hearing their applause. You're feeling the energy of you standing on that stage, you know, with your shoulders relaxed, you know, smiling or laughing. You visualize this, you're creating a very powerful imprint in your body so that every time you think about preparing for that big talk, instead of being nervous, worried about, oh, are the people going to be judging you or they're not going to get it or you're going to forget your words? No, you're not imprinting that. You are imprinting the ideal scenario, the best case scenario. And that's kind of what wishing is. It's hey, you using, know, yeah. The, the workshop that I just went was amazing because, you know, you actually did a guided meditation and then was saying, visualize like how you imagine, like imagine you were there pretty much. Yes, and yeah. That really helped because after we did that guided meditation and visualization, we start making our bracelets, we start writing it down. And it was so easy for me because I felt like I'm already there. So I'm yes. literally just writing it down, what I see, what I felt, you know? And right. Yeah. So and then you take, and then you just for people listening, that that paper, you take four sheets of this very 
um, cool calligraphy paper, if you will. And you're writing down all those details, activating your senses. What did you see? What did you hear? Who's yeah. with you? What are you wearing? Where are you standing? What time of day is it? What are the adjectives? Just all these things. It's a story that you're writing. It's a story of your wish. And then you roll that paper up and glue it and cut it into paper bead segments. And in Wish Bash um, and all my workshops, you're really guided you know, a little bit about how all of this works, then the visualization, then the creation yep. of your jewelry, and then, you know, really getting some insight into how you can bring that vision to your life right now. So I don't know if you want to share a little bit of what you saw. Maybe that's too personal on the podcast. That's okay. But the, the idea is that, you know, sometimes we're afraid to wish because we're afraid of being disappointed. It won't come true. But for me, the act of wishing is like getting a pin in the map of the destiny. Where do you mm -hmm. want to go? And that destination is so specific to your heart, to what you are desiring. So let's just say, you know, you even are thinking, I want to plan a vacation. Well, in my mind, my vacation, my ideal spot is Hawaii, let's say. But in your mind, you're like, oh, I can't wait to go trekking in Tibet. Those are two yes. very different things. Things. So when we say, oh, I have a wish, I want to go on vacation. Mm -hmm. It's specific to each individual. It's very specific. So if we work backwards and we say, okay, we can't stay general. I want a vacation. We have to imagine where am I that feels amazing. And if you don't have a conscious wish, that's what the guided visualization is for. You can surprise yourself. Like, where am I? Am I camping? Am I on a yacht? Am I, am I, you know, who knows? Am I in walking through the streets of New York city, but your imagination through the light of your heart will show you what you're desiring. And then I, when I you love it. I love the workshop. I mean, I have to say that workshop that I attended, it really teach me to, um, it, it actually helped me to visualize. And then at least I know what to manifest when I'm writing it. Because I, I be honest with you, at first I was like, I have to write all these pages. I don't know if I have that much. <laughs> no, today. most people haven't written that much in a long time. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, and then I start worrying, oh, I don't know if my handwriting was readable. I write really fast, but if I can't read it. So all of these things start kind of popping in my head. Yeah. Uh, like, do I do it right? Do I, you know, and, and I'm a professionist. So I'm almost like, I think I'm going to scoot this up. But when you, when you, when you were there, when the workshop and you surrounded with other people also have such a strong desire and wanted to manifest, I don't know what it is, that energy, I don't know what it is. And the fact that you guided us, it, I just started writing. I mean, I'm like, oh, yeah. I only finished four pages. That yeah, because yeah. you also can add things to it, even when you're writing, even when you're writing. But now that you have that, now that you've seen it and and you've hopefully seen some details, what's cool is that you can bring elements of what you saw into your life right now. Mm -hmm. And that's the part uh, that I think is uh, the part of wishing that I, I hope that I'm bringing to the table, which is you know, you don't have to have suspended satisfaction, meaning you don't have to be sad until you get your wish, which I don't know what you wish for. It could happen next week. It could happen in two years, yeah. but you can bring elements of that to your life right now. So whether you saw yourself, even as simple as this, you, if you saw yourself and you were barefoot, there's something yep, inside of I you. Was, I yes, was. <laughs> but there's something inside of you that yeah. is longing for that experience that seems mm -hmm. so simple, but it's actually satisfying. So what do you do? That means that when you can, let's say in your home or whatever, really with awareness, take off your shoes and really feel your fear bare feet on the floor or during the day, go outside, put your bare feet on the grass. And these tiny things that our conscious brain says, what's the big deal? I'm barefoot. But it was part of your wish. And what you're doing is that you're exercising a muscle muscle that says, I can do this. I can make my wishes come true. Because these elements were activating in a very tangible way. 
And so for me, I remember one time very distinctly, I was having a very quiet moment. I was sitting on this couch. I was in a home that's not my current home in Uh an area that was not my current area. I was looking at trees. I had a warm cup of tea and a book. Mm. Now I tend to, you know, run around all during the day. So if I'm reading, I'm reading right at night and I'm usually tired. So it doesn't last long, but this was during the day. Uh I was making time for myself. So I started to do that at least once a week, recreate that experience being on my couch. I would have tea. I would have a really good book. And I would look at my olive tree out my window, even though it wasn't the same thing. I took the exact scenario and recreated it in my life right now. Mm -hmm. And what that does is that somehow that also brings me deep, deep satisfaction, you know, and, and that makes me feel like, okay, I'm taking care of myself. Like I am, I am capable of fulfilling my own wishes. So that's a little bit of how that deeper visualization can be a powerful tool for getting very clear about what's going to make you feel satisfied. And, and that, what you just explain what wish pain is really synchronized. I mean, it, it really make wish pain the name <laughs> yeah. to it. So how you come up with the name wish pain? It's this perfect well, name. I would but love to say that it was to, my yeah. absolute brilliance, but it, it, the entire idea, which was originally the paper bead bracelet, which you experienced mm-hmm. um, yeah. and the name wish beads came downloaded to me in the shower. Wow. I was not thinking of a product. I was uh-huh. very happy and busy in my consulting and coaching yeah. and teaching world. And I had given a workshop the, the night before. So it was okay. really two ideas that came together that, that um, set me up for the download. Uh, the first of which I'll go in chron- chronological order. Th- that summer I had gone to Italy and in a little piazza in, um, Luca, I met a woman who was making all kinds of crafts out of paper. And she had this, these paper bead and fabric necklaces that were like shellacked. They had a really, and and they had so much energy for me. I thought they were the coolest. I actually have some, I'm sorry. I don't have some with me, but I thought they were the coolest thing ever. Uh And I bought a ton for gifts. And I came back. I just thought they were great. So the first idea (laughs) was like, whoa, you can make a necklace out of rolled paper and fabric and cool. Yeah. You know, that was, that was one input. The second input was six months later or whatever it was, I was brought in to do a workshop for a homeless women's shelter that's near my home. Mm-hmm. And that night I came in and I taught them a whole workshop about um, energy muscle testing and the power of positive thoughts. Mm. And we had a great evening. These are incredible women. Um, they're a part of this program. And my idea was to show them, and I don't know if you've done energy muscle testing before, but you actually, if you have a truthful statement or a positive oh, thought, yes. it yes. literally strengthens your muscles and a, and a not empowering thought or a negative thought weakens your muscles. And so I wanted to offer them some kind of experience to no matter where they are. And my God, they are experiencing tremendous challenges, all kinds of challenges, but the opportunity, the the notion that they, even in the, in the, in the hardest moments can, can hang on to some glimmer of something that's going to lighten their hearts, whether it's looking at the sky, a flower, looking someone in the eye for a smile that they're, that they could be lifted in some capacity. So we, we did a number of different exercises, but that was essentially, but the next day in the shower, in the morning, boom, the whole idea for wish beads came in into my mind. And I, it was bizarre. Cause I was like, I did not think that up. I was not actively thinking of anything of the kind. And I also felt that the name wish beads was so obvious that it was probably taken. So of course, getting out of the shower, I run to the computer and I, I check, you know, to see if the, you know, dot com is available, and it is. And I check, and I I'm make surprised sure. too. I mean, I mean, it's an obvious name, and uh, it is yours. I, I yeah. feel like that is your calling. It's for you to share with other that need yeah. it. Is. Yeah, yeah. And so I feel like I'm the ambassador of this idea. I feel actually a tremendous obligation to keep 
you know, iterating it and bring it out to the world. And I have programs that I'm developing for kids. And I, I have all kinds of things that I'm doing because I thought if, if this idea came through me, then I, it is my, it it's is yours. my, my gift or obligation or um, honor. That's probably the best word, my honor to bring it into the material world. Because I believe that wishing can be a very powerful tool for wellness. And I think we need more tools right now. You know why I feel because it gives hope, at least yeah. for me also, uh, a lot of time you just need hope or having a faith. Yeah. Um, and faith. and then for, for those women who go in and do so much, just even giving them a little hope is. Yeah. Is, is and self-love and, yeah. um, and cheerleading and, but hope is a very, very, very powerful. It's a very powerful word. And I, uh, I do think that, you know, it's almost like part of my wish is, is that these are so common, you know, that people who are out and about can see somebody else with wish beads on and know that they too are working towards their goals. You know, that they're, it's not something that's against the norm, but it becomes the norm, oh, um, like you that. know, so that you can see a kindred spirit who's like, yeah, I believe in that it's worth the effort. To not, you know, to make my wish, to wear my wish, to keep faith working towards my wish. Um, I think that would be really cool, you know, in the same way that. Just to let you know, you know, I agree. And then because of that, once I receive my first bracelet, I actually end up buying more for other, <laughs> for my loved one. I yeah. bought one for my son, who's eight. And it was just so adorable when you see him so excited writing down his wishes you know and yeah. I kind of take a little peek <laughs> I just like it's like he he wished he would get taller you know this is really it's just cute but I know uh -oh. well I said my so my son who is now 14 he uh, is a big baseball player and he wears three necklaces he you know mm. I have these I have uh, these necklaces that are like not the kind that you have but they have little um little tiny beads all the way around them. And uh -huh. he wears three of them. And I, you know, I always watch his games, but in this uh -huh. very quiet moment where he was about to go up to bat, I saw him just take one of them and kiss the cylinder. Oh. Where his wish was. And I was like, ah. oh. I was like, oh like so, because it's, it's his belief in him, you know, whether he's got you know, whatever his little wishes in there. But oh, just you make me want to cheer. That is I so know. cute. You oh, must be so, so proud. I know. Right? I know. I know. And I told you that it's the, it's, he's the same child that probably, my gosh, how, yeah, it was probably like eight. He was probably eight too. And when I was ready to do my Kickstarter campaign, because I did officially launch Wish Beats through a Kickstarter campaign, I was sitting at a kitchen table with him. It was very early in the morning. And I said, I'm about to launch this thing, you know, and start wish beads, you know, yeah. it was the paper bead kit. And, and he's like, and I was like, you're here with me. Like, do you want to hit like, you know, publish or whatever it is on, on uh, Kickstarter. And he was like all excited. And I was like, let's do it. So he hit, you know, he hit the button and then he scurries off to his room. Oh, now I'm going to cry. And he brought me $10. Oh, he was my first pledge. He's like, here's for your company. I'm just like, what? I literally I'm gonna start crying. And, you know, and I think about kids who are faced with all of these like whew, challenges and, um, you know, the pervasive use of, you know, drugs and whatever, all the things that are very challenging in this world. And if you can teach them that they have the ability to create whatever life they want to create, whatever impact they want to make in this world, but it begins with their intentions. What do they, what, what do they want? Name it and then have the courage to take action towards it, to, to, <laughs> to remember that's my, that's what I want to do. Right. I just let you know, because I took a peek of what my son wrote on his uh, bracelet and he said, I am tall. I wish you to be tall. And I gave him that bracelet to him as one of his Christmas gifts. Yes. So now I really want him to believe it. So I was like, 
you got taller. I think Rich Baby bracelet really works. So I mean, we how you have. So he loves it. He really Aww. believes it. So before he left for um, London, he lost his bracelet in school. He was so upset. So oh. I actually went back to school, tried to look for it, and then give it to him before he left. Oh, so that's did you find it? You did find it, right? I did find it. Oh, good, yes. good. I know. Yeah. So oh, it's great. meant for him. I, I told oh, him that's your so bracelet. Great. So yeah. great. It's so great. Well, yeah. look, the world needs wishes. And I think all of us, no matter who we are, need some support. You know, we just need to have our support tools, whatever that is. And I'm glad that there is more conversation around wellness now, that it's not something that's reserved for like, I don't know, the yoga community or whatever, that wellness is, is really such a necessary fabric of uh, everyone's life from the young to the very old. So yeah. And then I know you were thinking about what you already did at the kids camp, right? So are you right? So actually wish yeah. camp is uh-huh. funny, but um, wish camp is actually for adults. Oh, okay. Yeah. So wish camp is for adults. Now it's not to say that we won't eventually make it for kids. Cause I know that there are some organizations that are very, very interested yeah. and I've worked with nonprofits and we're building programs that way. Um, the original idea for wish camp is because I actually think adults, um, need to play more. I think that Ugh. adults need to yes. like plug out of their lives where things are, you know, you know, you're sort of, proje- you know, whatever you're in a different space where we need to feel the freedom and fun. Like we did mm-hmm. when we were kids. And so wishing, I mean, the whole idea of wishing is, you know, intrinsically playful it is this idea of returning to that time when we were young. I would imagine most people when you were you when you were young had a moment where you really did believe in a way, yes. you know, like Peter Pan. And yes. so that wish camp idea is actually like like a combination of, I mean, we're not going to sleep in tents, but like a combination of like crafting. Well, that'd be and fun. I, I don't mind it. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. yeah. Like crafting and creativity and yeah. like outdoor movies and silent disco and like just fun and silly and playful, but intentional that each of these things, because mm-hmm. the, just the way that I teach it, but that each of these things are actually tied into your wish. So I would love the, that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So let, we're, yeah, yeah. we're going to put together our first one, um, in Los Angeles, but I just was yes. having conversations. Yeah, we're going to do we I'm in conversation with someone in Whistler, Canada. We've got other locations that we're working on. We have one that's a little bit fancy that's going to be in Hawaii. Ooh. Um yeah, hey, so that, of- if anybody have that that vacation idea in yes. Hawaii, well, it came true. <laughs> it was yeah. going to come true. Yeah. Totally. So, so that so that's in development and then I just started doing and actually immediately got a bunch of referrals to bringing mm-hmm. wish beads workshops into corporate environments. So teams are getting back into the office or they're yes. connecting, you know, they haven't connected in a long time or they want to just lift their uh, employees up. And so we, we're doing, I'm doing, I just, you know, booked a couple more, but um, you know, group experiences where you would, you know, go through the guided visualization, hear how it works, um, you know, get copies of my book, wish work and, and sort of be, you know, be guided through that intention setting experience. Yeah, I definitely keep us posted about your wish camp because I, including myself, maybe I can't speak for other. I, I, I would love to be on the wish camp. And you're right. Absolutely, I think we need to play more. You know, we do and, need to play more. And yeah. I just, I mean, Amy, I cannot wait to have you on my podcast because <gasps> I, I, you know, I see you, but you are just as gracious. And I'm going to share with everybody the first time Evie and I met in person. <laughs> No, really, this is like unbelievable to me. And I think it deserves some, some major props for you. (laughs) So we connect and I love her. She's a people person like me. She's like, before I have you, like, I just want to meet you in person. I was like, awesome. So I didn't know where you live, but I suggested a a restaurant, which was near my house in LA. For those of you not living in LA, (laughs) where you live actually matters. Yes, it does where you live. (laughs) Traffic is a nightmare. (laughs) <laughs> and so you sort of like orchestrate your life by this crazy maze that is Los Angeles traffic. So shockingly enough, I had it in my mind that we were meeting at 11 when in fact we were meeting at 10 and I literally looking for things to do. 
Uh, well, maybe not so much, but I, I really was like riffing until I would go and meet Evie at this restaurant. Then I get a message that she's at the restaurant. It's now yeah. 20 and my heart starts to pound and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. Then when I get there, realize that you have driven from South Pasadena, which yep. might as well be like a flight away. It's so far away from where <laughs> it's about an hour, <laughs> an hour away. Evie, you could not have oh. been more gracious. No, you, you know what? I, I was, I, I took that as opportunity for me to be by myself and relax. And then just, you know how you were saying, like grabbing your book, have a coffee and just sit there. I thought that was a gift. It was the time for me just to do that. So thank you. Cause that was giving me an excuse to just to be, quiet and it just be yeah. by myself. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, it, it's, it's just a beautiful testament to who you are because you're obviously someone who takes situations that can by all rights and justifiably be annoying, um, <laughs> and turn it into something, uh, magical, which is, it's really, it's a gift. And oh, even, you. even the journey that you took, um, to Cambodia and to honor your grandmother and to travel, you know, in Asia, it, you know, again, it, there is such a strong part of you that already that like is so, and I don't oh. know enough about where you are in the intersection of your career and where you're, what you're doing and building, like really we're, we're still getting to know one another, but I can tell you, you have exactly what it takes to get there. Exactly. Oh, because you. your heart, you are living such a heart centered way. Um, and that is rare. It really is rare. So I, I'm so happy to get to play with you and know you and, um, and celebrate you and support you on your wish journey. <laughs> Thank you. And then I, I can't wait for the more stuff you're going to do. Cause I know everything you create is helping more people and Alexa, if it's not you, then who's going to be going to do it. Same, same right back at you, sister. That's right. <laughs> it's up right? to us. We're the ones yeah. we've been waiting for for people <laughs> yeah i mean it's that's true. what i was saying is is calling for you if it's not you yeah. then who then so, who then yeah. who and i also think because you mentioned earlier in the podcast that you're a perfectionist yeah i was like yeah me too <laughs> and i am gonna i am going to like bust through so one of the activities i'm gonna share with you something funny one of the activities in uh -huh. wish camp uh -huh. I, it requires a demo. I mean, a, a prop. So hold, please. Oh, I want to see. I'm yes. looking forward to the wish camp. Yes. So one of the activities that we're going to do. Oh, we get a we get a sneak peek what wish camp do. will be. So yes. for my birthday a few years ago, okay. Uh -huh. For my birthday a few years ago, I I love Bob Ross. Do you know who Bob Ross is? Uh uh. What? <laughs> Evie, I'm gonna send you a link. So Bob okay. Ross was a very famous uh -huh. painter who had a very, had a well-known, well, I think it's even more famous now, television show where he would teach you how to paint in 30 oh. minutes. And you do it, it was step by step. And okay, you know what it is? Remember when I was at your workshop, I was so concerned how I'm not creative. So I was oh, yes. how am I yeah. gonna make my place? Oh yeah, Evie, this is gonna be a growth <laughs> experience for you. Let okay, me tell you, okay? Cause this is how you heal your perfectionism. Okay. So Bob Ross, and I'll send you a link. It's very enjoyable to watch. I don't know why, but it's very soothing. He basically oh, he walks you through how to make a painting in a half an hour. And he does it in this sweet little voice. And it's all very, oh, then you do this over here. It's fantastic. It's like a whole thing. So for oh. my birthday, I was like, I, and he's got this big Afro, um, you know, the hair, his signature look, mm -hmm. um, he permed his hair anyway. Um, so I had the fake wig on and uh, we did a Bob Ross birthday party and we oh, set up wow. a monitor and easels. Like we had, I had 15 people with easels and pallets full of paint. And I said, everyone, and everyone, we had Bob Ross wigs, which I'm gonna have to get the wigs too. I meant I should surprise you about this, but it's going to be so good. Yeah. But, but you, pl you hit play and uh -huh. we had to make the painting in 30 huh. minutes. And okay. for some people who would be like, I can't, uh, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It literally doesn't matter what the outcome is. It's the experience of creating and learning how to overcome that voice. That's like, this isn't right. I'm not doing it right. I'm, 
it's pretty powerful. So here's my birthday Bob Ross wow. painting. Wow. It, that looks really good. But it's just step by step. I don't know how to paint. And really? if someone has that look really good. I and I'm not saying this because you're my girlfriend, but but that no, looks really good. You, I do not know how to paint. I do eee. not know how to paint. All I was doing was just uh -huh. watching and being silly and, and just like boop, boop, boop. Okay, then you do this boop, 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 and then you do this boop, boop, boop. That is so beautiful. We're gonna do that. But it okay, was, I'm looking forward to it because that look like you have skill. I do not have skills. I have so a supreme sense of fun uh -huh. and uh and not attachment to the results, but it was it mm. was super fun. So not all of the things that we're doing in no wish attachment. craft are crafty like that, but no, but that was good. Uh, and then that's what the thing you just said. I think that's that's the part that I have I had to work on and have yeah. no attachment to the result. Yeah. And then I think when we writing our wishes in our, our wish being bracelet or necklace, is yeah. when you're writing it, you just write it and you no attachment. Yeah. 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 You know, just with love and curiosity and openness and I was talking about wishing and I was talking about adventure, the word adventure. And someone said, oh my gosh, I love that word adventure. And I think that that's also in the spirit of camp, this idea that like, wouldn't it be amazing if we could, you know what I mean? Like this idea of, of set out on this adventure. Um, and that's kind of what I, I'll get into my head and I'll think, oh, I'm launching too many things. I'm doing too many things. I'm too scattered or I'll, I'll be hard on myself. Trust me. And then I'll have to go back. I'll have to rewind and be like, okay, what feels like amazing? And what can I do right now? Or how can I make this easy? You know, there's, there's different ways, different language yeah. that you can talk about, but, but you know, that's, that's part of getting to know who you are and how you work. And they're all, um, all the stuff you have done, they all relate and all tie to your purpose. It that's is. That's how yeah. I look at it. So. Yeah. And I think yeah. that, yeah. And I think right now I'm learning um, how to weave that more into my messaging and mm. stop feeling like, oh, over here, I'm a course creator, teacher, consultant. Mm. And over here I'm, you know, like, so now I feel like this year is about really merging those two to really understand that it it is the teaching and it's all the same thing. And there was a wonderful gentleman that I, that I'm working with. And he, when I was asking him that sort of question about like how these two worlds meet, mm -hmm. he said, well, you know, if you're someone who's in the, in the business of, of building your dreams, you know, you have to have confidence. Like you have to have confidence to talk about it. And so he's like the whole work that you're doing about helping people overcome fear and mm -hmm. tap in their confidence and learn how to express themselves. Mm -hmm. That's an integral part in having the confidence to also take action towards your biggest wishes. So mm -hmm. there, there, there is a dance between the two. And I really look forward to continuing to polish that messaging so that those two worlds dance a little bit easier together. So... I just want to make sure I don't miss your wish count. So uh, <laughs> I will let you know. Can you please let me know? And I will. I, will. To I want to there so else. badly. <laughs> so, so this year is happening, right? With the wish camp. Yeah, this year is happening. Camp. I literally will have a call okay. in. Yes, I will have a and call then, in. And then before the wish camp, because I know a lot of people would love to attend your workshop because I yes. have such a great experience with it. And then already people have been asking me, just to let you know, one of our mutual girlfriend's birthday is this weekend. And she already asked me, um, you know, like, how can she get people to do the workshop? And then I said, awesome. you should contact Alexa, or do you want me to? So <laughs> like, yeah, and then I, I yeah, yeah I, she's so she lovely. Go she, anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's go anywhere. fantastic. Absolutely. So that's exactly what this year is about. We're hosting Wish uh, Wish Bash, which is you know a, a three or four hour experience in a beautiful home in Marina del Rey, California. Um, we'll host them once a once a month. Once but a month. All, okay. Yeah, it's once a month that it's open to the public. And then I also am doing private experiences. So that means everything from corporate retreats to if someone has a special birthday or, or, or celebration that they want to do for their, you know, for their group. 
Um, the sweet spot is about 10 to 15 people. Okay. And, um, and then we'll do a longer form wish camp, which will probably be about three or four days, which is going to be in Los Angeles as well this summer. Okay. So before the wish camp come out, I just want to give that information out because a lot of women be asking me already, um, if you wanted to attend a workshop and then, and it's, you just said it's once a month. So I don't want anybody to miss out this opportunity. So, um, so we just finished the February one. So the next one in March, the next one is going to be, I believe it is scheduled for March 24th March and it's 24th. already listed on the website. So if you go to wishbeats.com, I'm going to double check to make sure what the URL is, but I believe it is wishbeats.com slash wishbash. Okay. W i s h b a s h. But I'm going to double check that right this second. Yeah. Um, Cause I, and then I, we're going to be posting additional. Yeah. We'll be posting additional dates okay. really shortly. Cause we posted the first one for three dates. Okay. Um, and, uh, and so we'll load them up with, with more dates very, very shortly. Okay. So let me, I will actually in the show notes, maybe I can give you a direct link. Okay. Um, because and then I'll put that on my, on my link. So everybody can click on it so they can yes. go to it directly. And yes. like you said earlier right. that you also do corporate private events. So they just have to reach out and then. Absolutely. Um, yeah. They can reach me directly at Alexa at wishbeads.com. Perfect. And, okay, uh, good. Yeah. And that's the way that we can, we can start wishing together. Yes. Okay. Oh, one last thing. I don't want to take up your t- too much time. Another thing I thought really fascinating. I mean, just so many things about, just so many fascinating things about you, but we would never finish the conversation. But uh, <laughs> what's the 1000 watt? I was oh, going to ask you that. My 1000 watt presence. Okay. Yeah. What is so that? Long before wish beads, uh-huh. I really, you know, people would say that whole thing of like, oh, someone just lights up a room. And so mm-hmm. this idea okay. of light has always been with me. And it's funny, I have all this light like shining down on my head right now in my office, but a thousand Watts is, is what happens in my work. And the way that I've always taught was getting people in touch with what this inner light that's inside of them, that's mm. here what it, roughly in this heart centered area. So when you are overcoming your fear, because fear actually keeps us blocked, we block our light. We're afraid to stand out. We're afraid to say the wrong thing. So we sort of block ourselves off. But when you unlock that fear and you start to tap into your light, you radiate as if you were a thousand watt light bulb. You are walking into a room where you literally light up a room. You are bringing light into your consciousness. You are shining that light onto others. And so that's what my, I have a signature course called Radiate Confidence. Uh huh. Um. Uh. And it has to do with unlocking your thousand watt presence. This idea that your light is your gift to the world, and stepping into that light and being in embodying that with with ease is is not just beneficial for you, which of course it is, but it's that light that touches other people. It's Radiant. that light that when you walk into a cafe and you just smile at somebody, it has an effect on their body. It does. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. when you come from that place, less fear, less doubt, you are opening yourself up to connect more easily with others. And there was a, a, a research study done, I think it was just released out of Harvard that said the secret to happiness is actually connection. Oh, it is. I believe so that this, it yeah, is so connection. This, right. It's connection. Now you're somebody I feel that connects quite easily with, with others. I've dealt with you know, hundreds of thousands of students who have a hard time connecting. And I think that in today's digital culture, especially post pandemic, that, you know, social anxiety is on the rise. Uh, People being siloed in their digital worlds, we've lost that muscle of connecting, even casual connection. And so that thousand watt is really about your personal um, power and your personal presence and radiating that light. It's beautiful. And Alexa, as we close our episode, I just want you to know all the light are on you right now. Oh, I, I feel the light it. between us both. And I am, I'm so grateful. I, I just think you are an amazing woman. I can't wait to interview oh. you and hear more about your story Yay. and, um, and the, and the important, important work that you're doing in this world and, uh, and how beautifully you radiate. And I'm just so delighted that we got to do this recording. 
I know. I would give you a virtual hug. All right. Virtual <laughs> hugs and high fives and hearts. Thank you. Love you. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye.